two versions of lures I'm going to show you how to make today. One is my salad with my fat-free garlic dressing. The other is the hamburger with the works with extra ketchup. Let's go. Once the moon disappears, it gets dark, so to speak, where that stripe is. Look how much that tail pops. 100 pound, 45 kilo split ring, high sun, high UV. Oh my God. Oh my God. G'day guys, we are back for another episode on Windy Wonga. And I should stop saying Windy Wonga actually because YouTube doesn't like the word Wonga because it doesn't know where we are. We are in the beautiful Lake Awonga. And yes, as always, of an afternoon, this place is a little bit windy. I've ducked away into a bay. So I've ducked away in a bay this afternoon just to get out of the wind. Shoot a few videos for you guys before I get back out into that wind and try and catch a few fish a bit later on. So a few of you that are long-term subscribers will know or have watched my Barramundi basic series of videos. So this, I guess, falls into that category. So what I'm gonna do is run through basic principles of what I do in my tackle and tackle preparation. So in this particular video, I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this. <laughs> in all serious, not that one. Let's try that again. I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this. There are a couple of variations of how people would like to run the Molex. I'll show you a couple of ways to run it. And I guess it's personal preference of what you like to do and what you feel comfortable with and or, as I'll explain a bit later on, the scenario where you're fishing. So super heavily weeded or dark night versus bright night, moon, no moon, those sorts of things, daytime, nighttime, so on. So let's get into the business. So a few things you're gonna need before you get started. One, obviously a Molex Shad. Two, a different Molex Shad, which I'll explain in a minute. A pair of trusty pliers, some split ring pliers, some scissors, a bunch of your favorite treble hooks, solid ring, split rings, a drill, courtesy of Jason, an assortment of dip colors, and lastly, a chamber rattle, for the hamburger with the lot. Leave that till last. So a couple of things have changed just ever so slightly. I've been running for a little while, but they have changed since my OG Barra Basics videos. If you think you've seen it all before, just stay tuned, you might learn something new. So let's get started with our little Greek salad with a little bit of garlic dressing. Ghost bass, 140 shad, take him out of the packet. Straight away for me, on this variation on my salad, I'm gonna take off that top hook. So some big pliers, push down so that the Main part of the steel is actually gonna be buried under the plastic once you cut that off and it's not gonna be exposed and risk cutting your line. Put your hand over the top, cut it off. Now, I don't have a sharp hard surface to risk damaging my line. That hook point is well and truly buried inside the plastic. Now, next step, I'm gonna remove the hooks, hook I should say, from the belly. Remove the Colorado from the underside. And I'm just gonna keep this one because I'll show you why later. So the Molex Shad has a lot of body roll, which I really, really like. And that's one of the key features I find with the Shad is that body roll that I feel draws in fish and triggers a response when I pop the handle. So what I like to do to even increase that body roll is I take off as, as soft and supple as they are, those underside fins. I just like to take them off because I really want this lure to rock and roll and I don't want any rudder system on the bottom keeping it straight. Now, we're taking off that Colorado blade as well. I can explain more on the next lure. But with that Colorado blade, you actually create a little bit of drag to the back of the lure, which keeps it tracking nice and straight. So then now I essentially am gonna have two very similar lures, but two completely different lures. So rather than running double split rings, I'm now just gonna run one big size five on the front because I'm gonna be fishing this salad bait in the salad. This will be fished in the heavy weed. Double rings will hang that hook a little bit lower and I don't really wanna have that hook too low Then I run in the risk of catching too much weed. So this is a size five, 100 pound, 45 kilo split ring. It's one size heavier than I would normally run when I run double because with only run ring, you have a lot of torsion power against that ring and you really don't want that to fail when it matters. Same size five ring on the rear. A little bit tricky with the wire, but not too bad actually. And nice size five as well. They sit nice against the lure. Then you'll notice Rather than a loop knot, I like to run a split ring on the head and I have a nice free swinging toe point. So I can now tie straight to that split ring, no loop knot. Or what I like to do is run an M size assist ring because then I can tie to this solid assist ring and I can split ring my lures off and on. If I only have one rod set up, split ring my lures off and on and change between colors, change between styles of lures depending on the changing environment. So you might be running a solid color like a lavender, then you want to run something with a little bit of glitter in it while the moon is up and the moon disappears and you want to switch over to something that's full of UV and flash. So there we go, so far, three split rings, one bottom, bottom, top, 
and a solid ring for fixing the bait. Now we're going to the hooks. So because I'm only running one ring on the front, I can get away with a size 1 o hook on the nose and a 1 on the rear, and they will not connect up with each other. Important thing to understand when putting your treble hooks on your lure. They only go on one way. Think about the way that the lure swims. This has three edges. If you set it up in the wrong way, one of the treble points, this one in particular, will be hitting against the body and stick out. Whereas if you put it up the right way, we notice that the valley of the treble lays against the body of the lure and sits nice. Whereas if I put that on the wrong way, it would have sat funny like that and be sticking out all awkward. But now that is going to swim nice and flush, keeping it tight to the body and out of that weed. Same scenario with the rear one. These hooks are so slippery. So there we go. Two perfectly rigged treble hooks. So that there is our ghost bass rigged up or our salad. But what we're missing is the low fat garlic dressing. So yes, this already has a UV yellow tail, but I like to just add a little bit more dip just to enhance that tail, just that little bit more. And it also adds a little bit of scent. So whilst you probably can't notice too much difference on camera, that thing will be bright as and smells delicious. So let's get onto the hamburger with the works. This thing is the business. This is what a buddy of mine used in one of my recent videos. It's possibly the ugliest way that I think you could modify a Shad 140, but in a perfect scenario, this thing works. So we'll start, perch, Shad 140. This one is relatively simple to modify. Package in the bin. So you notice the perch has a silver Colorado, which is very important when it comes to fishing clear water, which we are in a Wonga. Places that are a little bit dirtier, you could run the gold Colorado, which is why I kept it off my ghost bass. But perch, silver Colorado, a lot of flash is gonna come off that thing, especially on a moonlit night, and we're gonna leave that on there. Same deal, size five split ring. We need two of them, one for the toe point, one for the treble, size M ring. Obviously, you don't need to add this M ring to all your lures because it's gonna stay on your line. The reason I am adding the size M ring to this one is because I'm gonna run two rods and I wanna put this bad boy on straight away. So the top hooks on these Shad 140s have been bulked up for Australian conditions. So you can leave that hook on. And in this scenario, I'm leaving that hook on because I'm not having a treble underneath where that Colorado is, just having that Colorado. I'm gonna have this one front treble. So on the front, so that it hangs nicely for you and swims even better in the water. This thing is getting super close. Remember this bad boy? Now's where this comes into play. What we're gonna do is drill a hole straight through the middle. So beware, there's a wire for the Colorado, which you don't wanna mess up in case later on you put a treble on there. And you also don't wanna drill through where that top hook is. So fortunately for us, perch is clear. So we're gonna go through just where that stripe is. In hindsight, I'd probably suggest using the drill before you put some of the super sticky and very dangerously sharp hooks on there because had that thing spun in my fingers just then, I could have went horribly wrong, but would have been caught on the video. So now we have that hole there. Before I talk too much, I'm gonna push that rattle in there because that plastic was a little bit melted from the drill and it's gonna to stick to that rattle just a little bit. So you can hear now, yeah, that's a rattle. So now we have a hamburger with just about everything, but we don't have any sauce. Hot pink. So the tail on perch already has a little bit of UV orange, as do these underfins, which I'm gonna leave on. But we will dip his tail in this UV hot pink. And now look how much that tail pops. That thing, the orange, fully exaggerated for some reason, even though that is pink. And that, my friends, is the hamburger with the lot. Has a rattle, Colorado, and some very delicious sauce on the back and that is ready to catch. So now to wrap this video up, I wanna to touch a little bit on colors. People often ask me, what's my favorite color? What's, which color would I use in which dam? Those sorts of scenarios. So it's not so much, whilst it is a little bit of color preference for a location, that location more depends on the clarity of the water. So I'm in Lake Wonga currently, and the water here is crystal clear. So I can see my lure from a long way away, which really does affect what I feel the fish are comfortable to eat and how much your lure needs to stand out for them to see that lure. So rather than talk on color choices, as in the colorways like ghost bass or perch or red claw, etc., I would more rather explain why and when I'll use certain color types rather than choosing or giving you a certain color that I feel work. So colors like ghost bass, very, very natural, very, very subtle, has no glitter and the body is translucent, see-through. Perch, similar deal, translucent body, not solid, a lot of glitter, and dabs of UV. Colors like my red claw, yes, 
Slightly translucent, but not really. Can't see through this thing. Plenty of glitter and a lot of UV activation. Then you have colors like pearl white lavender, no UV, no glitter, fairly solid body. Black gold tiger, again, translucent, glitter, no UV. So let's run through the scenarios. Daytime fishing, I'm gonna run a solid color. So I'm gonna run a solid lure like the lavender or something very subtle like ghost bass. So translucent, see-through, not much going on there. Looks very natural, very realistic. The reason I wanna run a solid in the daytime like this, in the daytime, high sun, high UV, also high reflection. I don't want something that's glittering, flashing, and just pumping out a whole mass of color during the day. So that's why I'm gonna run with either naturals or a solid color in a nice color that I like the look of. Then when you come into like moonlit nights, moonlit nights are where colors, depending on how much moon you have, you have plenty of moon, plenty of light, you can then still get away with colors like ghost bass because it has that subtle UV tail, which will stand out. But then it has a very natural presentation of the body. To fish a lot of in a well moonlit light is lures with glitter like the black gold and like the perch. I like to have that flash from the moon. And then when you have lures like the hamburger with the works, you also have the flash from the Colorado. So they're my sort of colorways that I'll run when we have moon and it's dark. I'm looking for a glitter in the body, just so I get that extra bit of flash, extra bit of presence to those fish. Once the moon disappears, it gets dark, so to speak, then I'm going to run things that really, really pop. So if there is any UV presence left at all, lures like my red claw that are covered in UV and a semi-solid body, you know, they're gonna show a good presence. And again, back to perch. Perch is a fairly solid looking color and it has bulk UV, especially when we've dipped that tail like that. So there's your sort of reasons. You've got solid colors and natural colors for the daytime with the subtle patterns. Once the moon is up, sun has set, I'm looking for lures with glitter on them, colors with glitter built in and a touch of UV. Once the moon has gone, I'm looking for full UV, solid bodies, things that really stand out and show a presence in that dark water. So that is how I like to rig my Molex Shads 140s. You have two options there, one to leave the top hook on, one to take it off and put two trebles underneath. Well, that has been, I guess, the first Barra Basics video for this new season. I hope you learn a bunch. It's just about time for me to get out and try and catch one of these fish. But thanks as always for tuning in. Appreciate you all and I'll see you on the next one.